So do you remember where you were when you first watched Terminator 2 Judgment Day? The 1991 sequel to the classic original delivered a phenomenal special effects laden flick that to this day is one of the most exciting movies ever made. It had Arnie at the very peak of his abilities as a box office draw, Robert Patrick as a mechanical adversary who's even more frightening than Arnie's original Terminator and some of cinema's most intense action scenes. T2 Judgment Day was everywhere, whether you were legally old enough to watch the movie or not. As was the case with many similar movie franchises, toys were made and of course there were video games. Multiple versions on multiple systems in fact. While there were more traditional action based titles based on the movie, this week we are looking at a port of the most notable release, T2 The Arcade Game or more specifically, the Super Scope supported Super Nintendo port of Midway's Gun Shooter. This is one of those games that takes minor liberties with the movie's plot, as levels jump between the apocalyptic 2029 future and the early 90s modern day setting. You, and even a friend if they want to, are a Series 800 model T101 android, fighting alongside the human resistance in the future, while also helping to save John Connor's younger self in the 1990s. Over the course of seven missions, you'll have to complete missions such as saving human resistance refugees, destroying Cyberdyne's research lab, and of course, fighting off the persistent T-1000 model. Midway really pushed the boat out on this arcade release, with their trademark digitised characters as seen in Pit Fighter and Mortal Kombat. And interestingly enough, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Robert Patrick and Eddie Furlong all reprise their roles in this very game in likeness and in audio. Meanwhile, this Super Nintendo version successfully translates pretty much everything that made the arcade version a crowd pleaser. The presentation is much closer to the arcade original than other ports. It looks and sounds pretty good overall. But of course, the reason I'm even reviewing this game in the first place is that it supports the Super Nintendo Super Scope peripheral. And the game's manual suggests that you don't use the scope and instead use the on-screen sight to fire. This sight appears when holding down the fire button and moves around as you fire, which works for the most part but can be a problem in some areas that require you to be a little more accurate to avoid friendly fire. It is possible to use the scope by holding down the fire button and pressing the red button on the super scope at the menu. Now this brings up a calibration target and allows you to use the scope. However, as the manual itself admits, it comes with a caveat of not being able to target certain areas of the screen, which is a pain as enemies can appear anywhere. But the biggest problem with the Super Scope support is that using it turns the entire screen into these horrible shades of pinks, purples and blues. The Super Scope does not see red lights, so these changes have been made to the game's visuals to allow for targeting. Sure, using the Super Scope works relatively well, and it is quite fun, but it can be a bit of a pain at times, as some of the smaller targets, especially on bosses, can be really difficult to hit. Meanwhile, you can of course use a standard controller to move an on-screen sight around the screen and fire bullets or your secondary weapon as necessary. The sight moves quite quickly which is great when trying to reach the other side of the screen, but not so great when trying to make small movements. Still, it does work and is a perfectly valid way to play. However, it may surprise you to learn that the best control method of playing this light gun shooter is the humble Super Nintendo mouse. Yeah, I know right? You only need two buttons to play this game, and moving your sight around with a mouse allows you to be as accurate or as speedy as you need to be. Plus, all the colours are as they should be. So yeah, while I'm reviewing this game as a Super Scope title, the Super Nintendo mouse is clearly where it's at for this game. It's good to have the choice really, as there is a lot going on here. You'll be firing at hordes of enemies, and they're not all your typical Terminators either, although you really will be turning a lot of them into scrap metal. Going back to the idea of being a little loose with the license, you'll be shooting at robot snakes, weird flying pods and the occasional scientist who throws corrosive chemicals at you. Yeah. And, uh, oh, and screen filling bosses that are big and frightening enough to make you cack yourself. And I haven't even mentioned the big bad T-1000 himself, although if I'm being honest, while there is a really cool section where you have to knock him down and freeze him with liquid nitrogen, he is the easiest boss in the whole game. Not that it's all plain sailing, because there are levels in this game that can be ridiculously tricky, like this area where you're escorting John Connor's pickup over a battlefield, protecting it from deadly hunter-killer aerial vehicles and absolutely blinging gold Terminator exoskeletons. 
or this one where you're protecting a SWAT van carrying Sarah and John Connor from a helicopter and a truck. If these friendly vehicles blow up from your ineptitude, you're losing a credit and starting from the very beginning and it can be really frustrating. There's also this really cool Cyberdyne level where like the movie you need to destroy all traces of Skynet research from the building so that the deadly AI defence system is never built and Judgment Day doesn't happen. You'll get a running target of how many items left to destroy and you really do need to destroy absolutely almost everything and this defines which of the game's endings you'll get, although in this port it only really changes the text and colour of John Connor's picture at the end. I can't help but criticise the pace of this release. Being an arcade port you can of course finish the game in just over half an hour, but there are way too many areas where the screen stops scrolling and you have to battle so many enemies before the level carries on. It really breaks the pace in a big way and you also have to pace your shooting as there is no reload ability. Your gun overheats the more you hold the fire button down, and the more you overheat it, the lower your fire rate. You have to be tactical about letting go of the fire button and letting the gauge fill up again, but that also puts you in the very likely risk of being shot at by all and sundry, especially since enemies are pretty much locked onto you as soon as they fire, draining your health bar like Arnie Downs protein shakes. A good looking and sounding port which provides excellent support for Super Nintendo peripherals everywhere. The pace occasionally grinds, while there are a few areas that are more than a little bit unfair. Meanwhile, the Super Scope isn't as suitable a method of playing as it really should be. One of the better light gun shooters of the 90s makes it to the SNES mostly intact, and while it's a better mouse game than it is a Super Scope one, it's a fun little blast. So if you enjoyed this review, please do check out all of my other Super Scope reviews in this handy playlist over here. I will be back very soon with another new video, but until then, you can catch up with me on Twitter, Instagram or Facebook at Pughoof Gaming. Take care and I'll see you guys all soon.